the difference between these two sets of sounds. Okay? So I want you guys to think which of these two can you hold when you pronounce? For example, the S, can you hold that? Just keep pronouncing it. Oh yeah, you can. What about this one? Yeah, it gets a little buzzy, but yeah, you can do it all day if you want to. Let's try to hold these two sounds. Just hold them. You can't do it. In order to make these two sounds, there has to be a stop and release. Here it's a huh. Huh, 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 huh. Yeah, so for these ones, the huh and the buh, uh, you have to stop and release to pronounce them. So that's why uh, the second component of pronounced cross sounds is the mode of articulation, or how we, are, how we articulate it. And the mode of the huh and the buh, Huh, uh, can be described as either a stop, some people call it a stop. Others term it as plosive, as in like a little mini explosion. Huh. These ones, this obstruction of air is kind of continuous friction, right? So that's why they call it fricative, as in friction, fricative sounds. We have another set of sounds as well. For example, let's take tuh and duh. Okay, can you hold these sounds? Can you go, no. You can't hold the T sound. You have to stop and release. So it's a tuh, same with the duh. You can't hold it. You have to da 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 So these two sounds are what? Stop or plosives or frictive? Well, they're the first one, right? Either stop or plosive. Okay, well how about these ones here? This sound is in um, ocean, right? This one is in chat. Okay. This one right here, can you hold it? The sh sound in shut, can you hold that sound? Sh yeah, you can. That's why it's a uh, fricative. Okay. So now if you go over to this symbol, one of the seven symbols that are not from the English alphabet. It's a combination of two different sounds. It's a combination of the sh, as in shoe sound, or shut, and the t, as in talk sound, right? So that's what the symbol represents. And the reason why it has that symbol is because this symbol represents the third the type of mode of articulation, which is A. This means it's a mix between fricative and plosive, right? So if you try to pronounce the t and the, the t and the sh together, you'll get a ch. Okay? Ch. So it has a little bit of friction there for a second before you release. Ch. So a fricative. And there's only two a fricative sounds in the entire um, English sound system, which are right here. Ch and J. Now, can you guess which one is which one is voiced and which one is unvoiced out of these two? Well, remember, one of the ways to tell if a sound is voiced or unvoiced is with air. So when you pronounce ch and j, which one has more air? Ch, j, ch. Can you hear that ch, the air come out? Yeah, you got it. This one, cha as in cheese, is unvoiced. Whilst the j is voiced. As mentioned before, uh, this one is unvoiced, the cha sound, and the j 
job is voice. Now these, uh, or the voicing factor, is the only difference between these two sounds, okay? So um, if you look at the mode of articulation, they're both africative sounds, and mix between fricative and plosive. Also, uh, they are both uh, pronounced in the same place of articulation, which is a third component of the three components of how we form uh, consonant sounds. So the place of articulation here, um, where is it you think when you pronounce ch and ja? Where's the tongue? Ch, ja. It's on the top of the mouth, right? Another way of saying the top of the mouth is the collateral region, okay? So the ch and the ja are collateral sounds. They're africative. Um, and the ch is, is unvoiced, while the ja is voiced, okay? So the only difference between these two sounds is what? Voicing. So unvoiced, voiced. This is how the under hip uh, hill chart is formed. Actually, all of these sounds in the first two rows, the only thing really distinguishing the two is voicing. So for example, the difference between pa and ba, pa, unvoiced, ba, voiced. Ta and da, ta, unvoiced, da, voiced, etc. So unvoiced, voiced, unvoiced, voiced, unvoiced, Don't forget the H or the C. 
down. Um, now the H, I think that is voice or unvoiced. Uh, what does it sound like? It sounds like air, right? So air coming out is uh, goes with voice sounds or unvoiced? Right, unvoiced sounds. Actually, the is only there's a bit of air. The L and R. Uh, let's first see if they're voice or unvoiced. Go ahead, put your hands on your ears and pronounce the sounds. You notice anything? Yeah, notice vibration. And these two sounds are called liquid sounds. And liquid just refers to that the fact that your tongue is in the middle of your mouth when you pronounce them, and air is coming to through the sides of your mouth. Next, we have the wa and the ya. And the wa and the ya are known as semi vowel or glidal sounds. And you can kind of see the name glide with those sounds because you kind of wa, ya. It sounds a little smooth when you pronounce it. Uh, let's go ahead and put our hands on our ears again and pronounce the sounds. Hold them. Whoa. Yeah. Feel the vibration? Yes. You did. So the third column is irregular uh, in terms of voicing pattern as well as mode of articulation. Um, it basically has all the irregular sounds that aren't even recover plosive. They have uh, the nasals. Liquids. Semivas. The nasals, liquids, and semivas. And then you have one 